Hello Internet, so nice to see you. People have asked me how to make your notes explode on the guitar and what they mean after a few back and forth, uh, what do you mean exactly? Do you mean to use uh, dynamite or stuff like that? No, they mean how do you do wrecking on the guitar? Wrecking is this kind of technique where you hit all the lower string of a note before you hit the note you want. It looks simple when you see other people doing. It looks obvious. It's not. There are a couple of tricks that make it work, okay? Now, the master of raking, the person who made the whole thing famous is Brian May because he's not just explode when he plays that thing, okay? I don't have the whole Brian May gear here and besides, I'm not Brian May, but I can show you how to do it. And then, if you ever get everything that Brian May has set up just the right way, it will work for you too. So, what are we doing right now? Again, ideally, the, the, the idea behind that it's really simple, is you're gonna hit all the string, all the lower strings. So, if I want to play this note here, which is a C on the 5th fret 3rd string, okay, I'm gonna hit the 6th string, the 5th, the 6th string, the 5th string, and the 4th string, okay, just before I hit that C note. The problem is that I don't want those strings to ring out. I want the string to be muted. I want them to make this noise, okay? And I don't want to rush to the string, I don't want to go. It's a sound, but the good sound comes better if it goes lower. You get this kind of hesitation before, before, before you hit the note you want to hit, okay? How do you do that? You have to mute the strings, okay, with your fretting hand, with your, I'm sorry, with your picking hand, your right hand, okay? And there is more than one way to do it. Most people mute using this part of their hand, so the heel of the hand, outside, the part outside. Other people prefer to use the inside part, okay? I'm one of the insiders here, I like to use this part of my hand to mute those strings, but in general, any part of your palm here, 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 will do the job if it's comfortable for you, okay? And the idea is you want to put that the part, any part of your hand you want to use, touching those strings, the tricky part that you need to train for, okay, it doesn't come natural, but the tricky part is that you have to mute the lower string, so in this case string 6, 5 and 4, so the E, the A and the D, but you need to leave the G string, which, which, which we are playing, free so that the note can play, because you need to have the noise on the first, on, on the string, and the note on the G string, okay? That's the first piece, but it's not the only piece, okay? Because if you just do this, even if you mute correctly, as you hear, it still doesn't sound the right way. There are two pieces missing here. The first piece has still to do with muting. So, I'm strumming, I'm raking the strings down until I hit the third string. The moment I hit the third string, my hand, and, and with, with the pick, reversed its motion, comes back, and I'm gonna put my pick in between the third string, the G string, and the fourth, the D. I'm gonna pull up against string number, the, the, the D string, against string number four, uh, holding down, the lower three strings. So I'm raking while muting, hitting the G string and coming back to grab the strings and pull them back. Okay? That's... I need that to silence them immediately. If I don't do that, even if I mute them, there's gonna be some residual sound. You can hear this, this bang, okay, behind, which doesn't sound really good. You want to silence the other strings immediately. This movement is not natural. This movement needs to be trained, and it needs to be trained simply by doing this. 
Slowly at first, yeah. see? Just this and back, these and back, these and back, these and back, these and back. So you break, come back and mute it. It sounds horrible right now because I'm showing you to use slowly. When you play it fast, it just sounds, sounds like there's a little bit of extra attack now, and this ex little explosion at the beginning. Right? There are other two points. The next thing you have to do is that once you play this note and make it explode, you're doing all this movement on your right hand, you cannot leave the note there. You cannot do this. It's just hanging the note there and not doing anything. It doesn't sound good. If you notice, every time great players do this, they always do something extra on the note. And what they do most of the time, they play a vibrato. Or a pinch harmonic. Or some, or maybe a, a hammer-on followed by a vibrato. Okay, but you, and you need to train to get to this movement with the right and the vibrato on the left because those things happen so close to each other that it's impossible to do it by naturally or by chance, okay? You need to train this. Now, you may like this vibrato or no. You may well want a, a narrower vibrato. Maybe you want, you want to put a slide instead, whatever you want, but you cannot just let the note hang after you make it explode at the beginning, okay? It doesn't work. So far, so good. Everything I've shown so far is simple, if you train it slowly, visible, and that's what you see. There is one element that it's invisible, okay? But it makes the most difference when you're wrecking. And the thing, it's very easy to explain, but then when I show you the standard at which it is done, you realize that you are going to require a little bit more training to do it. And the thing is simply said as you have to pick with a lot of energy. Every student I've, at which I've taught this in person picks too quietly when they start. Okay? It really requires a lot of energy and strength in that picking motion. So to give you an idea how much strength you need to do, you are going to do this exercise. You're going to grab your guitar. Okay? Do this right now, every guitar. You're gonna get ready for a note, so you just play the note you want, okay? It doesn't matter if you mute the rest or not, you can. You're gonna take your right hand, your picking hand, you're gonna put that, your right hand up high here, okay? Higher, higher than your eye level, okay? It could be here, it could be here, but higher than your eye level. And from here, you're gonna let this hand fall on the strings, okay? It doesn't matter. If you make a sound or not, just let it fall, okay? Let it fall, let it fall, let it fall. Do this right now, it sounds horrible, I know. Let, let it be, go and do it. Once you get this movement and you're actually letting it fall, okay? That's the energy you need to use. That's the amount of strength you need to use. So when you play this, you don't have to come from here every time. This is just to give you an idea on how much strength you need. Okay, and also to lose the fear of hitting the strings. You need to hit the instrument, okay? It's a tool. Don't be afraid of breaking it. It's pretty robust. It's a plank of wood, okay? So, you hit your strings, pretty strong. Hit all the strings, mute them. Come back with the pick to hold the string. Do a vibrato with the other hand and remember to pick strongly. And this gives you the little explosion at the beginning of the note that everybody likes. Now, I am playing this guitar straight into a boss katana with no distortion practically. I mean, I have a clean sound, okay? Of course, if you put in more distortion and then maybe you put in some delay like Brian May does, and especially like Brian May does, you raise the volume of the amp and get a lot of feedback between the amp and the guitar, and the note explodes even more. 
Okay, now I'm in a studio, I really cannot afford right now to raise the volume so with a clean sound to get feedback from a solid body. Remember Brian May guitar, it's a hollow guitar, so it feedbacks much, e much more easily. Okay, but if you get also the feedback, it explodes even more. But the, the technique, it's easy, but it's made of many small pieces that you need to get right to get the sound. Now I want you guys to go and try on your guitar, okay? Every single exercise, every single element, when you practice it by itself, sounds bad. But when you put them all together, they sound great, okay? So if you go back into this video and occasionally some of the exercises sound bad, it's because I'm showing you one element. At the end though, the whole thing <coughs> sounds... <coughs> it just gives that extra accent <coughs> to the note that you want in your solo. Go and try that. And until next time, enjoy.